we actually developed the infrastructure here at this wall after the 2005 forest package we got when John Howard puffed us and he gave us 70,000 hectares of rainforest um, and then they put up a, a forest tourism initiative and we were able to, to get 600 land out of the federal government <coughs> uh, infrastructure here and at another site. Sorry, who's we? Uh, the Tarkai National Coalition, or Save the Tarkai as we are now. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah um, one of the ironies on the Tarkai stuff is that we actually had better protection under John Howard than we had under under the current Labor government, which is a bit of an indictment, because Howard was hardly the conservationist. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we were, you know, were fortunate to get some reserves through that time and, and managed to get some tourism money to kick the ball off. We we took an approach in 2005 where we got 70,000 hectares of additional reserves, which left, uh, which meant it brought the Tarkon up to about 80% protected from logging, and there was about 70,000 hectares left that we didn't get. and. We, we made a call at the time that rather than go out and start screaming for the next 70,000 straight away, we'd, we'd promised the community that if you reserve these areas, you'll see a tourism dividend that will provide jobs. And so we decided for the next few years we needed to come good on the promise before we asked for the next bit. And so we maintained the, all the maps and that still showed the area we said should be reserved, but we, we shifted focus and we, we went out and we got involved in some of the tourism development stuff. So this walk and we produced 100,000 copies of a, a regional guide that went into all the visitor centres and we, we worked with the local councils and regional development bodies to put together a Tarkin tourism development strategy which has become the basis for the, the, the rollout of the tourism industry in the area and so it was quite successful and it meant when Forestry Tasmania came along a few years down the track and tried to put in a new logging road disguised as a tourism road, uh, we had the easiest campaign ever, the, the first, yeah. We, we sort of got out, we made a lot of noise about it and then found all the tourism groups behind us, the Aboriginal group behind us, mm. the, the local, two of the three local councils behind us and the regional development body and, and the best thing we could do in that scenario was shut up because everybody else was making the arguments and they couldn't be pointed at and say, oh, you're just a bunch of hippies and, you know. <laughs> so, so we learned really quickly just to coordinate things and shut up ourselves and, and let it roll. But um, unfortunately now we're in a mining fight and while uh, um, in the current forest agreement, provided the protection order carries through and finally becomes reserves, we'll see about 97% of the Tarkine finally protected from logging, um, so we get those missing bits, but only 5% of it's protected from mining. And so um, none of the new reserves will be protected from mining, and we've got 10 open cut mine proposals coming down the line, six of them in the assessment pro process already, and two of them that uh, we've currently got held up before the courts um, with appeals. So it's pretty full on, and it's likely to get um, into a blockade sort of scenario, direct action over the summer period this year as the. Um, some of those projects we've had held up will we'll finally get some approvals and, and start rolling out over the summer. But um, let's go into some rainforest and have a look. Yeah. Yeah. Cool.